Good morning po sa inyong lahat. At tayo po ay simula ng ating pong online worship service mula dito sa Dabao. Isang pagbati po. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Sa mga nasa Facebook Live at sa nasa Zoom. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. Ay po ay Uh, welcome po natin ang ating Panginoon sa ating pong meeting because God is within us. Sabi, the Bible says, if there are three, two or three gathers in His name, He is in the midst of them. So God is not limited by time and space. So let's just welcome the presence of our God in our midst. Let us pray. O Lord, our Good Shepherd, you are the source of all true and lasting joy. We praise you for your power, which is beyond compare. We worship you for your wisdom, which is beyond understanding. You can meet all our needs. You restore the brokenhearted and heal the wounded. You have revealed yourself to your people and are building your church against which the gates of hell cannot prevail. How great you are! Lord, fill our hearts with love as we respond by singing praises to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning po sa inyong lahat, sa lahat ng ating pong mga nasa Zoom. Kay Sister Ana Dolor Caldero, kay Jeffrey Vargas, Michelle Chua, Bic and Gia, Senoreno Palawan, Sister Annabel. Ganun din po sa Facebook, di, link ko, lang maba- di ko lang mabasa, wala yung mga pangalan. But anyway, good morning po sa inyong lahat. Supposedly, we are going to continue our topic doon sa ating pong accessing the courts of heaven part 5 but because the world is celebrating Christmas it's good to discuss this what is the real meaning of Christmas so we'll just continue our series next Sunday para uh, ma- matapos natin yung ating pinag-uusapan about accessing the riches of heaven now what is the real meaning of christmas that this is the the questions of believers of the lord jesus christ nung tayo ay believer pa wala naman tayong pakialam kung anong ibig sabihin ng christmas eh ang alam lang natin may kainan may handaan magsisimba ka ng siyam na ling siyam na madaling araw at pagkatapos sa 24 magdunod si buena That's all. Kaya 25 in the morning, halos lahat tulog. Di ba po yan? <laughs> okay? So, let's look at the birth of Jesus Christ that is mentioned in the Bible. Okay? Because sabi nila, ang Christmas daw is about the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, so let's look at the scripture nung... Uh, birth ng ating Panginoong Iso Kristo. In Luke chapter 2, verse 4 to 19, I'll just read it for you. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee, Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. 
and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. So today in the town of David, a Savior has been born. To you, he is, the, he is Christ the Lord. This will be assigned to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men whom his favor rests. When the angels left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Jerusalem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried up and found Mary and Joseph. And so they hurried up and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And when they seen him, they spread the word concerning what has been told them about this child. And all those who heard amaze that at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Okay? So, this was the first, Christ, the first, the birth of Jesus Christ. It happens. Okay? Now, ano ko ugnayan nito na tayo kristyano na? Okay? So, napakahalaga na ating maunawaan what the world is celebrating today. Okay, the question now is, are we celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, December 25? Or are we celebrating different God this December 25? Now, for, if you are not a believer, it doesn't matter. Now that we are a Christian, it is very important. It matters a lot. Okay, because we being the ecclesia of God, what happens is, we are the one that's given God an authority to allow. The Bible says, whatsoever you allow on earth will be allowed in heaven. Whatsoever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Okay? So, I'm a Christian and I don't celebrate Christmas. And here's why. Since I got this revelation... 35 years ago. <laughs> I don't see, celebrate Christmas. Lumaki yung mga anak ko ngayon, 30 plus na sila. They never saw a Christmas tree in the house. And they've been asking why. Why we don't celebrate Christmas? I'll give you the reason why. Upang maunawaan natin, ano ang celebrate ng mundo sa December 25? Number one. Jesus wasn't born on December 25. And Bible scholars and experts would readily admit that December 25 isn't the birthday of Christ. As a matter of fact, Jesus isn't born anywhere near this date. Bakit po? We all know that the shepherds are out on the field when Christ was born. And December is a winter time. And winter in the Middle East would be very, very, very cold. At walang hayop at tao mag-survive doon kung sila ay nasa labas. And if Jesus was born, in the dead of winter, the shepherd would be exposing their herds of sheep in extreme cold. So yun po ang pwedeng mangyari. Okay. Sandali lang po at ayusin ko lang itong aking uh, PowerPoint. So, basically, it is not December 25. Everybody will agree. Bible scholars will agree with me that it is not December 25. Okay? 
Not only that, but we read that Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem because of the Roman census. Diba? Kaya sila pumunta roon, there was what? A Roman census. And the Roman government would have known better than ordering a census during bad weather and road condition is self-defeating. If that would be December, wala makakarating na ano, na mga doon sa census na ginawa ng Roman government. So, alam nila yon that that is not winter time. And according to Michael Hazer, you can Google it or you look at it in the YouTube. My, my, Michael Hazer is a prominent uh, evangelical theologian. And according to astronomy and the time when Herod was, uh, was the king during the time, it falls, Jesus was born on September 11, 3 BC. Remember the stars that appears there that you can find it in Revelation chapter 12 is there's only one event or time na lalabas yung star na yun. That is on September 11. And the manger is what? In Greek, that is Sukkot. Nang ibig sabihin, that was the time of the Feast of Tabernacle. And the Feast of Tabernacle falls on that week on between September 11. Okay? So that's the time we're in. Kaya di ba ang sabi ron? Walang hotel. Kaya ipinanak si Jesus sa Sabsaban. Ang Sabsaban na tinutukoy doon ay yung Sukkot, yung maliliit na bahay na ginagawa nila during the Feast of Tabernacle. Okay? So, this is very, very important that we know. So, if you want to celebrate the, the real birth of Jesus Christ, you do it on September 11. In fact, there was no command in the Bible that we have to celebrate His birthday. The only command that He has commanded us is to celebrate His death, the communion, <laughs> as often as you can. But the birthday... There was none, but I don't want to be, you know, mm, you can celebrate it if you want. But the problem is, if you celebrate it on December 25, something is wrong. You know why? Christmas celebrates the birth of the sun god. It's not Jesus. And do you know that Christmas was always been celebrated more than 3,000 years before the human birth of Christ? Oh. Bago pa isinin lang si pa ang ating Panginoon Jesus Cristo, they are already celebrating Christmas. And the earliest roots of Christmas can be traced as far as 200 BC. And the pagan history of Christmas is started with the Greeks celebrating a festival in honor of Bacchus. Bacchus. So, the question is, Ito yung, sino ba yung bakus na tinutukoy ng, ng Bible? Originally, he is Dionysus. He was the Greek god of fertility. Later, he became known as the god of wine and pleasure. The Roman called him Bacchus. So that is the god that they celebrate on... December 25. So the Greek god of fertility later became to be known as the god of wine and pleasure. Oh, yan yung god na sinicelebrate. Now, yung mga unang panahon, sabi ng mga kristyano noon, eh, maggawa na tayo ng sariling. Sabihin na lang natin na ito na yung date ng pinanganak si Jesus. To Christian, parang what they did, they Christianized the celebration. Like for example, Halloween. Why we don't celebrate Halloween? Because that is what? A gate of the demonic... Uh, the gate of the demons or the demonic... Uh, the kingdom of darkness. That's why we don't celebrate uh, Halloween because that's not God's festival. So why we celebrate Christmas if 
this is a celebration to that God. Kaso nga lang, kasi yung Christmas, medyo hindi siya very subtle. Hindi demonic, quote-unquote. Unlike Halloween, dun lang sa mga itsura ng mga nagsiselebrate, malalaman naman ng demonic talaga. Eh ito, medyo very subtle. Hindi mo mapapansin. The Romans also have their own festival held in honor of Saturnalia, the god, Saturn god. They worship Saturn. Okay? And both festivals are known for their revelry, nocturnal orgies, chaos, riot, and even death. That is the one that is happening during that time. So, centuries later, the Roman Emperor Aurelian inaugurated a festival in honor of the sun god on December 25. And it was known as the Dies Natalis Solis Invicti, which means the birth of the unconquered sun. Imagine, number three reason, I can say that Christmas is offensive to Jesus Christ. Now, you might have different beliefs, but this is the thing that I believe, and this is what I'm sharing to you today, and I want you to consider it. If you feel it does not witness in your spirit, throw it away. Forget what you have heard from me. But if this thing is witnessing your spirit, you have to consider it. Number three reason is Christmas is offensive to Jesus Christ. Why? Imagine every year you give a gift to your husband or wife. Only it wasn't his her birthday, but the birthday of your ex-lover. Can you imagine that? Now think about what Jesus Christ would feel when you celebrate his birthday on the same day that the pagans celebrate the birth of their gods. Diba? God is jealous, God. Sabi niya, walang ibang Diyos sa sasabihin kundi siya lang. And why we are celebrating with the word? Celebrating their gods. We just Christianize it. We call it the birth of Christ. So what worse is you celebrate Christ's birth by using same pagan tradition. You used to celebrate the birth of pagan gods. You have the Christmas tree. You have Santa Claus. All this uh, symbolism you can see on the churches today. Right? Let's be honest here for a second. Christmas is something that's highly insulting to God and to His Son, Jesus Christ. That's the reality. Number four. Jesus won't celebrate Christmas if He is here. Why? Nowhere in the Bible do we see Jesus commanding His disciples and followers to celebrate His birth. Only His death, not His birth. Okay? In fact, we see clear indication that Jesus, the disciples, and the true church observe God-ordained holidays found in Leviticus chapter 23. If you want fiesta, there is fiesta in the Bible. And the, and the Bible called it the Feast of the Lord. At ito yung fiesta na gusto ni Lord na celebrate natin. And now, if you are really a follower of Christ, won't you also celebrate? Wouldn't you also celebrate what God command us to observe? May sinasabi si Lord na i-celebrate natin. Okay? Not the pagan celebration, but ex exclusive celebration, and they call it the Feast of the Lord. If we are to celebrate a festival, wouldn't it be logical to follow that what we read in the Bible and not borrow a paganistic way of worship?
hindi tayo pwedeng magbaro ng kanilang festival. You cannot mix something that is holy and unholy. You cannot mix something that is God's and something that is of the devil. So, in, I'll just like to read it. In Romans, uh, Leviticus chapter 23, you can find, I just forgot to nabura yung aking PowerPoint. You can see there in Leviticus 23, the, the feast of the Lord. In the first feast, Nasabi ni Lord na dapat nating oh, the Passover. Okay? And then the Feast of the First Fruits, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Boots. So these are the the feast that is mentioned in the Bible. Okay? Number 5. Number 5 reason. God seeks true form of worship. I understand that some people are sincere in keeping Christmas because they believe that that is the birthday of Jesus Christ, the birth of Jesus Christ. So they have a sincere, you know, keeping Christmas. They solemnly believe in their heart of hearts that they are actually worshiping God during this season. Okay? And I don't condemn or blame them because that's the only thing they knew. But in a world ruled and deceived by Satan, it is not their time yet to know the truth. Kaya ganun. Not yet that time. To know the truth. However, when you finally come to the truth and discover what the Bible truly says, you come to realize that worshiping God is not a matter of our will, but God's will. Okay? When we talk about worship, it is not our will. Eh, sasabihin mo, eh, ito gusto kong way i-worship si Lord. No. It must be God's will. Because God is seeking true worshipers that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. It's not about us. It's about God. So, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na, you know, I just worship Him the way I want. No. We need to ask God how He wants us to worship Him. Is He happy when we recycle pagan practices and traditions? and sanitize them with Christian accessories? Sige po, let's ask ourselves, and let us be honest to ourselves. Is he happy when we recycle pa pagan practices and tradition and sanitize them with Christian accessories? Is God pleased when we say we believe in him and yet turn a blind eye when he decisively command us to avoid pagan worship. Christmas is a pagan worship, mga kapatid. Are we really honoring God when we worship Him according to what seems right in our own eyes? No. We are not honoring God because it's not our will that would decide how to worship God. It is His will that would decide how we are going to worship Him. John 4, 23-24 clearly defines what true worship is. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. The Father is seeking such to worship Him. Because God is His Spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in Spirit and in truth. What the Lord is looking is not worship. He is looking for 
worshippers, tao ang kanyang hinahanap. Worshippers ang hinahanap niya. Because the real worship, if you want to know where is the real worship, it's in heaven. It's 24 by 7. The real worship happens even right now in heaven. And that's not what he's looking from us. He's looking what? Worshippers. So God want us, God want us to worship him in spirit and in truth. So it's not on our will, but his will. So are we truly worshiping God in the spirit when we are so focused on the material things we receive? Are we truly worshiping God in truth when we know that Christmas isn't really the birth of Christ? And that Jesus did not command us to worship him by keeping a pagan holiday. <laughs> this message is not for the unbelievers. This is for the believers like you. Who is watching now or watching later. These are hard questions we need to answer with all honesty. Number six, Santa has become the face of Christmas. Diba? If you think of Christmas, most people would probably think of Santa Claus more than Jesus Christ. It is not difficult to see why, because Santa has been the face of Christmas commercialism. Most business people would rather promote Santa a man who encourages buying so they could earn more sales. However, do you know the real identity of Santa Claus? You can research in the internet. Do you know the being behind his jolly bearded smile? You are up for the shock of your life pag nabasa nyo. Okay? Seven, Christmas is driven by commercialism. It is not difficult to see why Christmas popularity is driven by commercialism. The problem with commercialism is it encourages the way of getting rather than the way of giving. Okay? Christmas actually is about what they do is they want to get something. And it pro promotes here in the Philippines mendicancy. Kahit saan ka pumunta, may nagpapalimos, may nanghingi. And ang feeling nila, obligado ka magbigay sa kanila because this is Christmas. Yes, a lot of people give gifts during this holiday season. But more people get this feeling of entitlement. Di ba? Kahit saan ka pumunta, hihingi ang ka, Pasko naman po. Di ba? <laughs> there, there is what we call the feeling of entitlement. When we were in Dinagat, pagbaba namin, galing kami Dinagat, diretso kami Surigao City, ang daming mga badyaw. At itong mga badyaw na ito, galing daw sa Sambuanga City. May isang malaking lansya, ibinaba yung mga badyaw doon. You can see the sindikato. <laughs> so, and they are the one, may mga bata, matasanda. Walang ginawa doon kundi mag, ano, mag, uh, magpalimus. Di ba? Nagagalit nga yung mga tao doon, yung mga nagkakargador sa, sa pier. Sabi niya, kami nagpapakapagod magkarga, tapos kayo hingi lang kayo ng hingi. They feel that since it's Christmas, they should receive gifts. Okay. The thing is, di mo man birthday. So assume natin, for the sake of argument, birthday ni Jesus ang 25. O ba't ka naghahanap ng gift? Di mo naman birthday. Birthday naman ang iba. Di ba? So not only that, but a lot of people give something expecting that they would also get something in return. Kaya di ba sa school, meron tinatawag na, they call it exchange gift. Oh. 
eh, kami no, mga maliliit pa kami sa school, may exchange gift. So sabi niya, oh, worth 50 pesos. Then later on, matatanggap mo, wala pang 25 pesos. <laughs> And then you will just get upset because ikaw, nagbigay ka ng ano, more than 50 pesos, then suddenly what you get is less than what you give. So thus we have exchanging gifts during Christmas. Okay? The thing is, it is not even your birthday. Oh, see? Ba't ka nag-expect ng regalo? Dili mo man birthday? Oh. Number eight. A lot of lies are propagated during Christmas. These are some. Okay? Christmas tells us that Christ was born in the dead of winter. Now we know that is a huge lie. He's not born on winter. He was born on September 11, 3 BC. So if you really want to celebrate Christmas, celebrate on September 11. And here are the Christmas lies you should know about. Number one, three kings. The Bible didn't specify how many kings there were. They aren't even kings, but they are wise men from the east. So ipalagay na natin na yung wise men ay isang, ang ibig sabihin din ay kings. Punta sa yung argument. But it was not three. The Bible said it was wise men from the east. Who told you that is three? Elementary kami, nag-ano kami Nagpa-practice kami ng song. I don't know. I was already a Christian. So, abag, meron kaming Christmas presentations. And then sabi niya, May tatlong haring nagsidalaw. Sabi ko, no, no, no. That's a wrong theology. Sabi ko, mali. Hindi, hindi, hindi tatlo. May mga haring nagsidalaw. Po, pwede yun. So, the, the day of presentations. Look what happened. Nawala yung ano, bumalik pa rin doon sa may tatlong hari ng sidalaw. <laughs> Why? Because we were used to that. We're been programmed to believe that there were three kings. No, three kings. Next, nativity scene. The nativity scene shows a baby, Jesus in the manger with the animals. Di ba? Actually, there was no animals. The animals are out in the field. When the wise men arrive, Jesus is already in the house, not in the manger. Jesus is no longer a baby, but a rather a young child when the wise men arrive. Next. Bring Christ back to Christmas. You can bring Christ into something that He wasn't part of, part of in the first place. You cannot bring back Christ to Christmas. Di ba yan yung mga message? Bring Christ back to Christmas. Kasi nga, ang sikat sa Christmas ay sino? Si Santa Claus. So we have a message that you have to bring Christ back to Christmas. That's not true. You can bring Christ into something that He wasn't part of. Christmas is a pagan custom recycled as a Christian holiday. Mga igsuon. And then another lies, you worship God when you observe Christmas. Actually not. You don't worship God. If you want to worship God, you need to do it according to His will and purpose. And Christmas is not a date of His birth. And, Chris, and December 25, it is not about Jesus Christ. It is about the pagan God. It's a pagan celebration. So we can believe in God and do other things contrary to His command. Hindi po pwede yun na sabi nyo na niwala ako sa Diyos pero ang ginagawa mo naman eh contrary doon sa sinabi ng Diyos, hindi po pwede yun. So now to mention, not to mention that many pagan symbolism 
and accessories used in this holiday season is not from God. So, dun sa Diyos nila yun. And why you as a Christian participate in this kind of pagan worship? That's a question that need an answer. An honest answer. Nine. While it is true, Christmas hides the true festivals of our God. While it is true that Christmas is something that could give you the warm feeling, makes family gather together and even make you feel closer to God, but it is not the best way for you to achieve this. After all, it's not about what you feel, but what God feels. The truth of the matter is that Christmas is a pagan is a pagan custom used by Satan to obscure God's true festivals of God. Ginagamit niya itong Christmas na ito para mahide yung tunay na festival ng Diyos. There are true festival of God. Mga kapatid, na minimension niya sa Leviticus chapter 23. It is not the festival of the Jews. It is the festivals of God. That's why sabi niya iba, ay mga hudyo lang yan. No. We should be the ones celebrating it because this is the festivals of God. This is not the festival of the Jews. And most Christians today are oblivious to, to this God. Commanded feast found in Leviticus 23. Number one, the Passover. Leviticus 23, 4 to 8. Number two, the, fest, the festival of the unleavened bread. And number three, first fruit. Number four, the feast of weeks or Pentecost. And number five, the feast of trumpets. And number six, the day of atonement. And number seven, the feast of tabernacle or boots. You can find in Leviticus 23 verse 34. So Jesus didn't celebrate Christmas but rather God's festival. He celebrated the festival of God when he was here on earth. And the apostles celebrated God's festival as well as the first century Christians. So people are trapped in the illusions that Christmas is the best way for them to worship God. Christmas is the, not a Christian celebration. If you want to celebrate what the Bible says, look at Leviticus chapter 23. So if you only celebrate God's festival, you will discover why it is better than Christmas and how it can unlock your understanding of God's great plan of salvation. Lastly, I would rather follow God's command rather than human traditions. It is okay to keep human traditions, but if it goes against God's command, then they should be forsaken. That's the rule. Okay? There are good human traditions. Oh, you can celebrate New Year. There's nothing wrong with that. But Christmas... Something is wrong. It's a pagan celebration. Christmas is a human tradition that promotes lies and sadly obscure God's truth. So when it comes to choosing between God's will and human tradition, the answer should be obvious. You have to follow the will of God. So we must do what God wants us to do rather than what other people want. Christ himself condemned the Jew of his day when they hold on their tradition and break God's command. He answered and said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, hypocrites, as it is written. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines and commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the traditions of men. So when we keep Christmas of 
pagan holiday that was clearly called an abomination by God, we are breaking the law of our Heavenly Father in the process. So between God's law and human tradition, which would you choose? The popular choice is keeping human traditions. But as for me, I'd rather keep God's law. Now you know the truth, and it's up to you. Hindi naman namin kayo pwedeng pilitin. So if you still want to celebrate Christmas, go ahead, make your day. But for us, for me, I would rather not keep human traditions. I rather keep God's law. Even though it is unpopular and people might ridicule me, it's okay lang. I still follow what God says instead of living a comfortable life by going with the how of me with the flow of mainstream Christianity. Why did he come on the first place? Why would why was Jesus became flesh? Why he was born by Virgin Mary? Why did God send his son to this sometimes this sometimes cruel and hard world? Why God sent his only begotten son? He sent Jesus to us so that one day he would grow up to become a very important part of history. His story, the history is his story is one of truth, love, and hope. It brought salvation to all of us. That's the very reason Jesus came. Because the Bible says, without the shedding of the blood, there will be no remissions of sin. Without Jesus, we would all die in our sins. And the wages of sin is what? Separation from God. And Jesus was born, so one day the price could be paid for the things we have done that are wrong. Ano ang sabi ng Panginoon? Doon sa cross, when he was in the cross. Ano ang sabi niya? It is finished. The Greek word that they use there is tetelestai. It is finished. And the literal meaning of that word is the debt is fully, fully paid. Ang utang ay nabayaran na. Because the wages of sin is death. May utang. Nasangla ang ating mga kaluluwa sa kaaway. At ayaw ng Diyos na tayo mapahamak. Kaya anong ginawa niya? He came. He became man. Bakit niya kailangan maging tao? Kasi walang sino mang tao sa lahi ni Adan ang pwedeng maging tagapagligtas. Because all have sinned. Lahat ay nagkasala. And the Bible says that we all have sinned. And we are all born with a sin nature. That's why no one from us can be a redeemer. Wala sa atin ang pwedeng maging tagapagligtas. Kaya kinakailangan ang Diyos na banal magkatawan tao para mamatay, para ano, magkaroon tayo ng buhay na walang hanggan. We do things that do not please God because we are all sinners. And through the sins of Adam and Eve, we have all inherited that sin nature. Namanan mo kasalanan. So we need to have, we need to have that removed. And the only way na maalis yan is only by the shedding of the blood of an innocent man. And the only way is through Jesus Christ. And Jesus came so he could die on the cross for all of our sin. That is the very purpose of his birth. If we believe that Jesus died for our sin, we can ask him to come into our hearts and forgive us. Then we are clean and made whole. The Bible says in 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sin, to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our 
wickedness or unrighteousness. Final thoughts. As this word celebrate Christmas, remember what the Bible truly teaches about this worldly holiday. It is the right time that we learn the truth and let the truth transform our lives. God is not impressed by how many gifts you gave or received during Christmas. He isn't impressed with how beautiful your Christmas decorations are. He isn't after what feels good for us, but he wants to see whether we will follow his commandments or not. So, will you still keep Christmas? That's the question. Some will and some won't. Some will ignore the truth while others will act on it. I hope you and I belong to the group of people who will follow God, no matter what the consequences may be. Amen. So today, we're going now to come to the Lord in prayer. For those who are listening in the Facebook, na hindi pa tumatanggap sa Panginoon, or wala pang personal na relasyon sa Panginoon it's now your time to come to the Lord and receive Him as your Lord and Savior mga kapatid the truth is Jesus already died on the cross of Calvary at ako'y naniniwala, walang sino mang tao mapupunta sa impyerno dahil sa kasalanan. The only thing na ang tayo mapupunta sa impyerno is when He rejected the offer of our Lord Jesus Christ of the salvation that He did on the cross of Calvary. If you are listening and if you have come to this channel and you can pray with this prayer. Panginoon, kinikilala kita bilang Diyos at Panginoon at aking tagapagligtas. Ako po ay naniniwala na ikaw ay namatay para sa aking mga kasalanan. Panginoon, binubuksan ko aking puso at tinatanggap kita bilang Panginoon at kapagligtas. Pinagsisisihan ko po ang lahat ng aking mga kasalanan. I believe in my heart and I confess that Jesus is Lord. Panginoon, sa oras na ito, Ang pangako mo, if I will confess my sin, you are just and faithful to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I believe what you have done on the cross of Calvary is the one that cleanses me from all my sins. Thank you, Lord. And I accept you now as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us now come to our communion this morning. Ang sabi ng Panginoon sa 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23. Ito po ang tagubili ng ating Panginoon. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body. 
which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us now partake the bread and let us remember what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us in the cross of Calvary. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as, I, as, you, all, as you eat this bread, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, we thank you for the shed blood on the cross of Calvary. It cleanses our sin, our, our whole being, Panginoon. And because, because of that, you said that we are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. And because of that, we have now the righteousness of God in us and can allow us to enter the heavens in the realm of the Spirit because we have an access to your throne, Father, because of what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross of Calvary. The good news, Father, is that the debt is fully paid. When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, He is saying that the debt is fully paid. We thank you, Father God, and we honor and worship you for what you have done for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's now partake the juice. Hallelujah. Let us now bring our offering and tithes before the Lord. Remember when we give our tithes and our offering, we're not giving it to the church only or to person. You're bringing it to our high priest, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why the Lord commanded us to give our tithes and our offering? Because we are all priests. And the priest is required to bring their tithes to honor, the high, to, to honor God. And remember, our high priest is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you bring your tithes to your church or bring or give it to a certain person, you are not giving it first to that church. You're bringing it to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me pray for you right now. Father, we just release your blessing for all the things that you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, because you are the one who supply all our needs not according to our own riches, not according to the economy of the world, but according to your riches and glory. Because glory means wealth. Father, we just receive the blessing as we access the riches of heaven. We know we can receive everything that you have promised for all of us. And it is blessing to each one who is in the Zoom today even doon sa mga nasa Facebook na nanonood sa oras na ito i release blessing upon them in the name of your in the name of your son Jesus Christ we thank you father for your goodness and for your mercy hallelujah you can bring your um tithes or offering to this account hallelujah Hallelujah. Let us now have our closing prayer. Okay. So, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa umagang ito, sa lahat ng ating pong mga nasa Zoom. 
Thank you very much and good morning. Ganun din po sa ating mga nasa Facebook. So, advertisement. So, if you need, if you need coffee na pampapayat, meron pong coffee na pampapayat. Fit Trim ang pangalan. You can order it sa Shopee. Just uh, type lang yung word na Fit Trim or Nutra Green Enterprise. You can order there. Okay? So, yung aking chan, maliit na po. So, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, sa ating pong mga tagapakinig, God bless you po. See you next Sunday. Next Sunday, we will be talking about the last part of our series about accessing the riches of heaven. The title of that message is about accessing the riches of heaven through praise and worship. Okay? So, uh, see you next uh, uh, Sunday. Okay? Hallelujah. Okay. God bless you po sa ating mga kapatid. Mamaya po, Sister Gia, I send you the PowerPoint. Nakalimutan ko lang. <laughs> I send to you the, ano, the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. God bless you po. See you on next Sunday. Salamat po.